Welcome back, everybody. I am here with Adam. Hey, Adam. Hi, Bajir. Good to see you. Good to see you. I have a question sent in from one of your one of your students in the Thursday Declare or Play class. Uh, Bob, thanks for sending in this question. Why don't I just present it, and then we can look at the hand together, and hopefully you can talk it through. Adam hasn't played through this hand yet, so this is all off the cuff. How does that sound? Okay. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. All right. Uh, okay, again, so question from Bob. Uh, he First, he wonders how could he have made this hand? It looks like he played it in four hearts. But then he's also wondering, should he have bid five diamonds instead of four hearts? And then, of course, uh, uh, a few nice compliments for you, Adam. But I'm sorry, we're running out of time, so we don't have time for that. Oh, wait a sec. Go back, go back. I want to read the rest of <laughs> Uh, so here's the hand, and uh, yeah, well, first, why don't we look at the auction? What's going on there, Adam? And uh, what do you think about his four heart versus five diamond question? All right, so he was south to begin with, right? Because this is a robot thing, so he got moved he over, be, right? Um, but he was south as the as the at the beginning. So Bob opened a diamond. His partner bid a heart. We got a spade over call and we make a support double, right? Perfect so far. West bids two spades and it goes pass, pass. And South has a very good hand here. And all he did was bid three diamonds, um, which, which isn't like a big bid here. This hand's almost a four diamond bid. It probably mm. is a four diamond bid. Um, or a three spade bid or something like that. Like you have 17 points and a seven card suit. Uh, you got to be excited about this hand. Um, but anyway, he bid three diamonds. And, you know, of course the robot thought that showed like a big hand, which he happens to have. Mm. Uh, but if I were North and my partner bid three diamonds, I would just pass. Uh, but he didn't. Uh, the robot decided to force the game. And Bob bid four hearts. I would insist upon diamonds on this with this hand. Uh, like if partner doesn't want to choose hearts, I've already shown my three card heart support. And right. the uh, oh, match point versus imps consideration. It's not it's not front of mind for me here. Okay. This is this is not, oh, everyone's gonna be in game and I need to get to the highest scoring game. Sure. This is just what contract do I think is more likely to make? And you know, my my eight, nine, whatever card um, diamond fit feels better to me. Now, four three fits when we're roughing in the shorthand are good like when you're going to play in a four three fit you want to do it when you're roughing in the shorthand the yeah. problem is you want trump strength in the long hand and relative trump weakness in the shorthand so that you can you know rough with small cards right so the problem on this hand is that if they start banging down spades and we have to start roughing with the ace queen seven of hearts which are important cards for us. Yes, we need those cards for drawing trumps. Mm. So I would choose five diamonds, but here we are. We're in four hearts, and let's think about how to make it. Okay. So they're going to lead the ace of spades, and I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to turn the other hands off. Um, right? We should be thinking about hands single dummy, not double dummy. Okay. Uh, all right, let's think about this as though we were the declarer. All right, so then, everyone, forget what you saw. Right, you didn't see anything. Ace of spades, lead. And so what am I thinking? Well, the north hand's the master hand because it has the longer trumps. And things aren't that bad. Like, you've got the king of spades that they've just set up for you. And we're going to probably finesse in trumps and try to run the diamonds. So... You know, we're going to play small here. Ooh, wish trick. Ace, two, three, four. Make a wish, Bashir. And they switch to 
clubs. Which hand should we win this in? What do you think? Putting you on the spot. Sure, sure. Um, am I right that we want to play towards the ace queen? So, yeah, win it with uh, north. Yeah, a lot of the times I would be thinking, all right, take the king of clubs so I can then take the ace and then get a rough. But my goal on this hand is not to rough clubs. I want to draw trumps and run the diamonds. So I'm going to play select cards for all four players. Isn't that how this works? I'm going to play low. And then this is supposed to work, isn't it? And then I'm going to play a trump. Select cards for all four. Uh, let's see. I guess to play through, um, we'll have to view all four. Maybe, here. I, have to, maybe I have to do it here. Okay. So I'm going to play a Trump. Yep. Yeah. And presumably they're going to win that. And nothing they can do at this point is going to hurt me. Uh, right. right? Like if they play a spade, I just win it and throw, you know, one of these winners here. And I can draw trumps. And I probably, not probably, I want to test the diamonds right now. And the reason for that is if the diamonds aren't splitting, yeah. I need to set the diamonds up while I still have the seven of hearts as a, a threat here in the dummy so that they can't just run a bunch of um, spades. So eight ever, nine never. So we have nine of them. So I'm just going to play it here. And um, the queen falls. And now... And doing that before you draw out all of the trumps. Again, right. Again, in case the diamonds broke against us. That's right. So if the second diamond didn't fall, now I can give up a diamond and they can't attack me in spades. Because if they play another spades, I still have a trump in the shorthand to rough them. Right. Right. So I'm testing those diamonds and now it's easy. Right. Now I draw the last two trumps. The king of clubs is an entry to the good diamonds. That's the other reason that we wanted to win that club at trick two in the north hand was mm. to preserve the king of clubs he as a way down to the diamonds. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, for what it is, um, it's a really interesting hand. Yeah, and, beautiful hand. Um, thank you so much for, for sending this in. There were so many interesting points here. These four three fits are, are always hard. Um, I bring in a lot of them to the Thursday class because really good declarers are comfortable enough with four three fits that it makes them better bidders, right? Because if you're comfortable with a four three fit, you're able to be a little more aggressive, maybe making a takeout double or being, um, you know, a little more frisky coming in or whatever, because, you know, oh, okay, well, worst case scenario, we're in a 4-3 fit and I'm good at that. Uh, hmm. So it's funny how those little things as a declarer can help your all, your overall game and help your bidding. Uh, and when you, we, when you say good at 4-3 fits, you really mean um, – being able to recognize the familiar combos, knowing how to play. That's right. That's right. It's there's a lot of patterns. And um, declaring a 4-3 fit is simply a different animal than a 5-3 or a 4-4 fit. Um, mm -hmm. You have to think about all these other things like maintaining trump control and roughing in the shorthand but not the longhand. And are my trumps strong enough to draw clubs? And do I have the entries after I draw trump? You know, like... There's a lot of overlap, but there are a lot of things that are specific to a 4-3 fit. Um, and it's just practice. You just got to practice it and get used to it. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Bye.